Set on the plains of West Central Alabama is the rural community of Carrollton. Here, among the old cemeteries and charming churches, is an imposing brick structure that reflects one of this town's darkest moments. It's made of brick, and it's three stories tall, about 50 feet in height. According to playwright Barry Bradford, this building was the site of an enigmatic event that has been etched into this southern hamlet's history for nearly 140 years. The story has put Carrollton, Alabama on the map. What chilling tale of vengeance and guilt played out behind this building's looming windows. Eighteen seventy four, Pickens County, Alabama. Nearly a decade after the ravages of the Civil War, the town of Carrollton celebrates the construction of a new county courthouse. It was a source of pride for the town. They had painstakingly rebuilt it. But it isn't long before the town's pride is dealt a terrible blow. In the early morning of November 16, 1876, a fire breaks out and the courthouse goes up in flames. After the blaze is extinguished, investigators examine the smoldering ruins and conclude that the fire may have been started deliberately. Believing that an arsonist is in their midst, the people of Carrollton demand justice. They were angry when the courthouse was burned down. And of course, the people wanted to know who was responsible. While some of the town citizens focus on rebuilding the torched edifice, others seek vengeance. And a year later, a suspect is finally identified. A man named Henry Wells. Henry Wells was a freed slave who had the reputation of being an ornery man, a man who had a hair trigger temper and always carried a gun. For the sheriff, Wells' presence in the town the day the courthouse burned is enough evidence to take him into custody. Although Wells vehemently protests his innocence, his pleas fall on deaf ears. Henry Wells, of course, living in post-Reconstruction Alabama, did not have much hope of being found not guilty. According to local lore, the enraged townsfolk demand to be let into the courthouse to exact their own brand of justice. Leaving just one person between Henry Wells and the angry mob, the man who brought him in. The sheriff was a man of law and order, and in order to protect Henry, sent him upstairs to the third floor garret room. Then, it's said that Wells makes a final and desperate plea for his life, and with it, an ominous warning. Henry cried out, I'm innocent. If you kill me, I will haunt you for the rest of your lives. As the story goes, just as his words ring out, lightning fills the sky, illuminating Wells in all his anguish. But the townspeople, thirsty for blood, are unmoved by his protestations. They storm the courthouse and summarily execute Henry Wells. But little do the people of Carrollton know that Henry Wells will come back to haunt them forever. You can win it. It's your Andrew Z. Only on travel. 1878, Carrollton, Alabama. A freed slave named Henry Wells has been executed for allegedly burning down the town's courthouse. Legend has it that before he met his fate, he vehemently proclaimed his innocence, warning that if killed, he would forever haunt the town. So does Henry Wells make good on his threat? The day after Wells is executed, something strange happens. The man looked up and saw a face staring down at him from the garret room window. The witnesses' screams bring the rest of the townspeople running. They could see the, the face in the window whose mouth was open in fear and pain. The fake image in the courthouse window appears to be the terrified face 
of Henry Wells. Residents frantically clean the window, desperate to remove his eerie visage. But nothing anyone tried to remove the face of Henry Wells. Could this truly be Wells' face? Some are convinced that a curse has been put there by the spirit of the condemned man. But others insist there must be a scientific explanation. One theory is that perhaps the glass when it was blown had imperfections in it, uh, which weren't noticed until it was installed. Another theory is that the window actually served as a photographic plate, working in conjunction with the lightning, operating like a giant flashbulb. Some believe that lightning cooked the image of Henry Wells just as he was proclaiming his innocence. Yet modern-day photography experts dismiss the hypothesis for a simple but compelling reason. In order for this to happen, the glass would have to be coated with a photosensitive material which the courthouse window wasn't. You need light-sensitive emulsion to be able to create an image like that on a piece of glass. So in the absence of a coherent scientific explanation, some conclude that the ghostly image is indeed proof that Wells put a curse on the town of Carrollton. Maybe Henry is still hanging out in the courthouse. The truth is, we just don't know. It's a mystery. Today, what has become known across America as the face in the courthouse window can still be seen in the Pickens County Courthouse in Carrollton, Alabama. A spooky reminder of a legendary tale that's left its indelible mark on this tiny southern town.